Hi guys, hope you're well. Today I'm going to talk about the five point personality model. Now I'm regularly hired as a keynote speaker to give talks and demonstrations using my intimate knowledge of people as to how we can influence others. If you've ever been to one of my performances or speeches, you would have seen one of my demonstrations of influence. One of the most astonishing for members of the audience is when I invite a participant up on stage, put a blindfold around them, and then they hold a big rock in their hands. Using a technique I've honed and developed called influence without awareness, I can then genuinely get them to describe their feeling the softness and roughness of a sponge, despite it being a, a big look, big rock. When they look down into the rest of the audience that they see they are in fact holding a big heavy rock. Now this experiment can be repeated many times, but I keep it just, just uh, two or three demonstrations. With a second demonstration, I. I get somebody to feel a small silver teaspoon in their hands. When they lift the blindfold off, they look down and in fact they see a, a large soup ladle. One of the core applications of influence that I use in this particular routine, and one which also informs decision making when it comes to buying a product or service, or even voting, is personality analysis. Now I've been a, a mentalist or psychological illusionist, whatever you want to call it, and a master of influence for the best part of 10 years. And I've honed my ability to be able to identify people's key personality traits in a very short space of time. We all exhibit a wide range of personality traits. And in fact, Gordon Allport, and one of the founding figures of personality psychology, identified that we exhibit 4,000 of them. Preceding this comprehensive study, Raymond Cattell had identified 16 dimensions of human personality, while Hans Eisenick created a three-factor personality theory. Eisenick identified these traits as psychotism, extroversion and neuroticism, and their bipolar opposites. Many researchers agree that Cattell's theory was far too complicated, and Eisenick's was too limited in its scope, and Allport's theory was too detailed. As a result, the five-factor theory emerged off the back of these to describe the range of traits that form the building blocks of our personality. This was later coined the Big Five, or O-C-E-A-N, Ocean as the acronym. It's these five core personality types that I look out for in my initial interaction with the participant. By combining a quick evaluation of their personality with other more subtle influence techniques, some of which I'll share with you in other videos, or you can find in my Effective Influence book, I'm able to influence participants' actions and behaviours, such as influencing them to describe the feeling of a sponge when in fact they're holding a rock or similar, as I said, holding a teaspoon and feeling a ladle, or vice versa. I must also add that there's no hypnosis or embedded suggestion in my work, just the intimate and covert use of influence, which I'll talk about later on. Making an assessment of the five-factor personality traits of the person you want to influence when it comes to the subtle art of influence and persuasion is the absolute key. Thus, no further delay, here's the five-factor personality model. First, Openness. Are they open-minded and authority challenging? Two, are they conscientious? Are they self-disciplined and prefer structure and plans and order? Three, extroversion. Do they enjoy spending time with others? Four, agreeableness. Are they warm, friendly and place other people's needs before their own? And finally, number five, neurotic. Do they tend to worry a lot? As I mentioned earlier, if you send the same message to different people in the same demographic, they may have very different views of the world. To give you an example how, to, how this would translate to different personality types, an open person may be more sociable and therefore more likely influenced by the views of others in their own peer group or social circle. A conscientious person may be more ordered and therefore more influenced by a rational, fact-based argument. An extroverted person often seeks to engage with experiences and to respond to excitement or attention whilst an agreeable person may be more altruistic and tend to put the community and society needs ahead of their own, being influenced by those in their community or society. Finally, a neurotic person may be more heavily influenced by emotional message. So hopefully you can see you've got five different personalities, types, and how you should tailor your message dependent on the one. I hope you've enjoyed this, and I'll see you again sometime. So thank you guys. Bye.